today we're going to talk about condominium life.、Mm. Really, like, why would someone want to live in a condo? And we think it's for freedom, a freedom from many different things. So, if you've ever thought of having freedom, or you live in a condo now, and you're wondering, should you stay in the condo, or you're thinking, should I move to a condo, or what's the benefits of a condo? This is the show for you. So you might want to just stay tuned, and even if you're not thinking of buying a condo, we've got some extra tidbits that will come during this show. So the, first, first I gotta ask, what? What's a condo? What's a condo? Yeah, so many people come in and they they have an idea of what a condo is, but it may not actually be accurate of what a、mm. condo is. So let's clear that up right away. Well, condo is short form actually for condominium,、mm-hmm. and a condominium is where You own the rights to use or the 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 property inside the building, typically, and the outside and the p- common property, common areas. You own a portion of that with all the other people. So, generally, then there's a board of directors that looks after what to do with that, and then you have a maintenance company, and they repair the outside of your、mm-hmm. building and the grounds. And, Clean the snow and cut the grass and fix the fence and the deck and whatever needs doing on the outside. They just automatically take care of it, and you pay a monthly fee for that. So the only condos are these high-rise condos? No, lots of different condos. We have、uh, condos that are like a townhouse.、Mm-hmm. It might be two-story, three-story. You might have stacked condos where you've got、um, a floor that goes down to the bedrooms and a f- and you enter on the main level, and then a staircase that goes up to another unit, which is Kitchen, living room, and then bedrooms on the top level of that. We call it a stacked condo. There's condo apartments.、Um, Is there detached condo, condos? Yeah, there's condo bungalows. <laughs> Stitzville, there's some bungalows that are condominium, and so there's no ground maintenance to worry about. There's no shoveling snow to worry about. So those are popular as well. So what you're telling me is a condo is actually the ownership style,、yeah. not the building type. Yeah, it's not a style of of property. It's it's an ownership. It's a little lower level of ownership than fee simple. Fee simple would be a freehold, where you own total rights to the property. That's and you can do whatever you want to well, it within with, zoning with, and whatever yeah, yeah. building code. Exactly. Whereas with these condos, you'd have to get permission from the condo、mm-hmm. to make changes. Yes. So, good question. And now we're going to introduce ourselves.、Nice. And you are. I'm Ryan Decker. And Ryan, you've been in real estate for how long now? Oh shoot,、uh, seven years. Six, six,、yeah. seven, in there. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Well, I think actually you you were brought up in real estate. I was, yeah. Because、uh, your your mom went into real estate right after you were born,、mm-hmm. basically.、Great. Yeah. And then you got into it, I think, when I was four. As soon as you went to school, four. Yeah. Yeah. So how long ago was that?、Uh, I don't know. I'm so bad at my age now. <laughs> well, like twenty five years. Nineteen ninety four. Was、yeah. when I got my real estate license, January of 1994. So we've been helping hundreds, thousands of families make transitions from either renting to owning to、uh, moving from a freehold to a condo, moving from condos to freehold, moving from the city to the country, from the country to the city. All kinds of reasons why people move. And moving、right. from different countries to Canada, yeah, that happens. Out, becoming、mm-hmm. missionaries, there's all sorts of things that we. Yeah, help people move forward. So right now, what we're going to discuss on this show is specifically condominium life, lifestyle, costs, that kind of thing. Why would someone want to live in a condominium than another property? And by the way, condominium sales have been climbing、uh, pretty much all year,、mm. and values are climbing, and、uh, inventory is going down. So that's a good. That's good news. That's really good news for condominium owners. Hmm. And for the market as a whole, because it's been down for quite a while,、mm-hmm. or at least stagnant. Yes. And now it's starting to grow again, which is awesome. Yeah. So, people move to condos because they're tired of maintaining the outside of a building. Because、mm-hmm. sometimes,、uh, sometimes it's that stage of life. Maybe we're getting a little older. We don't want to cut grass anymore. We don't want to、yeah. weed the gardens. We just want it know, taken care of. I know a lot of people who are like, Ryan, I've got so much going on in my life. I got young kids. Maybe they have a husband, maybe they don't, and they're like, you know what? I just need less in my life so I can do more with it.、Hmm. And so they cut out some of these maintenance things, some of these having to save for a roof. It's less to think about, less to manage, and、uh, it's a great thing、yeah, for them. Yeah, it's it's easier to budget. 
And some of the some of the scary things about condos, like um, special assessments, mm-hmm. have significantly been reduced since the Condo Act w- was redone and required that they would have engineers in every couple of years to do a study of what the maintenance would be for the next mm-hmm. number of years out, and then they would look at the reserve fund and the amount that has been going up or going down and say whether the condo mm-hmm. fee was sufficient. So people aren't being blindsided as often now with a large assessment. And my question right away is, well, how do you find out that information if the condo is doing well or not? Yeah, well, that's through the status certificate, which used to be called an estoppel certificate, but under the new process, it's called a status certificate. And your lawyer would order that at the time that you put an offer in on a property. And they're going to find out uh, the minutes of the last meeting. So it's going to show whether there's any... Uh, special assessments contemplated if there's any lawsuits against the condominium for you know if someone slipped or fell outside or whatever or maybe they have a, a lawsuit against a contractor that didn't do a good job or whatever so you'll That's know all this up front you'll know it you'll know you'll how, know how well much you're... reserve fund there is what the budget is how much money they've spent the last few years compared to budget whether because i've seen condominiums where the management group tends to spend more than the budget every year Mm-hmm. And so they're going the wrong way and they're dipping into the reserve fund. And other ones are being very prudent and the reserve fund is, is climbing. Mm-hmm. But you have to also weigh that against how much maintenance are they doing to the property. In other words, if we've, our reserve fund may be low, but we just, we just changed all the shingles on the place and we put all new windows in and new doors. And so the, the amount of maintenance upcoming is going to be small and they start building the reserve fund up again. Yeah. So you, so you have to really understand what's in the document and what condition the condominium is and in. And a lawyer will help you with that. So you yes. don't need to be an expert when you buy a condo. We'll do that for you and the lawyer will do that for you. So you'll be protected and make sure that you're getting a great condo. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of other things in there too. Like if you bought a freehold, you may or may not know what building supplies were uh, used to build the unit. There may be asbestos, there may not. However, in a condo, and I've ran into this this year a couple times now, if there's in these older buildings, sometimes there is asbestos. And they'll tell you where it is, what it's in, and it's right in the condo documents, Hmm. which is really cool. Very neat. Yeah, so if you're looking for um, more freedom Mm -hmm. in your lifestyle, then a condominium may be the way to go. Mm-hmm. And like we said earlier in the show, there, there's a lot of different styles of condos. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be limited to an apartment because some, sometimes apartment style is what people are looking for. They want, they want that style. They want the elevators. They want mm-hmm. um, the view. They want the view. They want the amenities. And we're going to talk about amenities in a little while. But that's the style they want. Other people say, oh, I don't want to live in that. It reminds me of when I rented an apartment or whatever. And so I want to have something that's more like a townhome or even a, a single or semi-detached. That's a condominium. Mm-hmm. So the other reason, which is interesting, people buy condominiums is they cost less, typically. Mm-hmm. Which means what? Less down payment. Okay. So it makes it typically an easier level for first-time buyer mm-hmm. to jump into. Uh, but also, uh, sometimes people are buying a condominium because they're moving from they've had the trophy home or the big house or the medium house and they just want to go to a condominium so that they have the kind of like um, lock the key and forget about it mm-hmm. go go away travel go go south for two three months not have to worry about maintenance or anything going wrong with it because mm-hmm. no grass to cut no garden yeah. to do it's, Ev- it's done everything's done and so they they may want it for that reason mm-hmm. but also people want to be closer to the core and and when you say it takes less down payment because some people are downsizing mm-hmm. i'll call it downsizing they move from a say a four six hundred thousand dollar house a four bedroom whatever the kids have moved out they move to a smaller condominium and they put a bunch of money in their pocket and that money they go to somewhere where it's hot mm-hmm. costa rica florida mm-hmm. wherever dominican republic um, Arizona, California, whatever, and they buy something with their down because they're taking mm-hmm. some equity with them, right? So now they can put some down payment. And usually, if you're going out of country, you're going to need 50% down to buy a, 
uh, a remote property. So they need to take that equity with them. Hmm. So that's where price comes in. Now the other thing is condominiums typically pop up, especially the towers, are more in the core. Mm -hmm. right? So sometimes you can be right downtown and have downtown living in a condo where you just can't get that unless you pay millions and millions of dollars um, in a, a freehold downtown. Yeah, exactly. And so why would someone want to be downtown? Ah, for work, for... There's so many reasons. Mm -hmm. You don't need a car a lot of the time. Right. Uh, people bus, they bike. It's a very different lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. And they desire that. Right. Okay. And Less there's, even, there's even nice condominiums in the Glebe now. That mm -hmm. are, Some of them even overlook the stadium. They can watch the soccer yeah. games and the football games <laughs> with no charge. <laughs> with the, actually, I think there is a charge. What? I think there's a slight monthly fee or something for being oh. in those condo sites. Oh, is it? That it's, side. it's part of their condominium fee? And it's a little bit higher because they're on that side. I believe so. I could be wrong. but yeah. That yeah. could be. So they get to watch the hockey game that's coming up in, from their uh, couch. in December from their couch. That would be cool. Really right? sweet. We should get tickets to that hockey game. Yeah. Have you ever been to a live NHL outdoor hockey game? I don't think I have. No. That's coming up in December right after the Grey Cup. Cool. Because the Grey Cup's here, so they're installing... A whole lot more seating oh, in cool. the stadium, temporary seating. And while it's there, they're going to leave it in place for a week or two. And after the football game, then they're going to put in artificial ice cool. and play a hockey game between uh, the Ottawa Senators and Montreal Canadiens. Ooh, big and game. It, yeah, and plus the seating. I don't know, I, I'd have to look it up, but I think it's somewhere in the 40, 45,000 people or something. So that'd be a big crowd, right? Mm. We could get all the Montreal fans. Because that would, you know, be just a very small portion of the stadium, and get all the Ottawa fans and fill the rest. That's very cool. <laughs> condos. <laughs> oh, um, we're talking about condos. Well, what's cool about Ottawa, and this is just a side note to condos, is they've been doing a lot of things this summer to bring in tourism. I think they spent a couple million dollars on those giant robots, and yes. they made so much more than that for the people coming in. Uh, or sorry, for the businesses, from people coming in and paying mm -hmm. for meals or whatever. So those kind of things Ottawa is really working on. Mm -hmm. And I love to see that because it'll affect values. It'll, it just, it's just really Does it great. affect the values of condos? Uh, I think it will. Just because the whole economy is The economy is doing better. There's yeah. more money. There's, it's mm -hmm. just, yeah, great okay. place to be. Great. great. So uh, we talked about you want to travel freely. That's, mm -hmm. that's a great mm -hmm. reason for a condo. Um, sometimes they want the nearby support. Mm-hmm. The other thing where condos pop up is quite often near terminals of mm. the transit way. So, mm -hmm. so um, as you get the, the, un, the, what do we call that? The O train? Yeah, yeah. Is it called the O train still when it's underground? The, the O subway? I don't know. It's, it's above ground, underground. Anyway, near the terminals, you'll find there'll be some, some uh, growth coming. Because if you look at an aerial photograph of Toronto, you'll see there's clusters of tall condominiums in little groupings. And they get smaller as you move out of the city. But each mm. one of those clusters of condominium towers is at a subway terminal. So it's really cool. And you'll probably find similar thing will happen in Ottawa. Yeah. So they want to be near support systems, mm -hmm. hospitals, churches, mm -hmm. um, schools sometimes, that kind of thing. And especially, like you said, it's a different lifestyle. Most people will want to walk, mm -hmm. and uh, they want to avoid stairs. So the the, yeah. the stacked type of condominium doesn't suit if they're trying to avoid mm -hmm. stairs, right? It's more for a younger right. crowd, typically. And so that's still, yeah. And so with these apartment buildings mm -hmm. where people, and the difference between a rental apartment building and a condo apartment building is big because often people take a little more ownership in their property when they own it versus rent. That's not always the case. It's often the case. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in a condo apartment, um, there's other people who own in that building and it creates um, mm -hmm. just a really cool environment. And amenities, we talked, or you talked a little bit about those. So what kind of amenities would be in these buildings? Like what, what, well, what would the, cause you to want to live there? What's interesting is the amenities are, are morphing or changing based on the age of the condominium tower. Hmm. Um, a lot of them have outdoor pools. Some had indoor pools. Mm -hmm. um, some of the newer buildings, they're not, they're, they're not putting the pool in. 
because the pool is a very high maintenance item. Expensive item. Yeah. To, yeah. And what they put instead is a, is a home theater. So they'll put in a 12 or 18 or whatever seat theater and people can go down and watch mm -hmm. DVDs and that kind of thing. They put more common space where people can gather and uh, play cards or whatever. Throw a party. Yeah, they have party rooms. They have guest suites. So if you have guests coming over, you can rent a suite cheaper than putting them up in a hotel. Because mm -hmm. usually if you're in a condo, you might not have guest rooms mm -hmm. and lots of space to have company. So they have usually yeah, a couple bad. guest suites to, to rent. Or if you're at school and you have one of these condos and your parents are coming down to visit you, they can mm -hmm. rent there and then they're not actually in your unit, but they're able to see you. That's a bonus. Eh? It's a bonus. They don't have to <laughs> sleep on the couch. I mean, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. And yeah. They, what other rooms do they have? They have a gym usually. Usually nice quite gym. often a gym. A sometimes workshop a, sometimes. Yeah. A library, a, a games room, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So so they, they create common rooms for a lot of the things that maybe in your house you had those separate rooms that mm -hmm. you didn't use very often here it's shared right mm -hmm. or a study um, hall the other thing that's really important is the underground parking oh why is that important well for for a lot of people especially in the towers they're going to have underground parking and there's nothing like getting into your car and it's warm even in the winter time mm -hmm. there's no snow on it there's nothing to clean off and you can wash it you can wash it anytime right <laughs> And the beauty, usually they have a wash bay, so they don't want you washing at your parking spot. Area. But yeah. usually they have one spot that's got a drain and a hose, and you can wash your car there and then drive it back and let it dry. So that's an amazing feature. And as well, unloading groceries and things. You drive in, you take them out in a warm environment, you get into an elevator, you go up to your floor. It's it's an easy process. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, especially the, the uh, senior people, a lot of them will have little um, little carts they hang on the wall beside their car and then when they get their groceries they put it in the little cart take it up the hallway and away they go you know and cool. next time they go back to the car they take their empty cart back and bring it down there for the next time they have groceries or whatever to bring up so so it's a it's it's a really convenient way mm -hmm. and these again are not any condo these are we're talking about apartment condos that's now. an apartment condo yeah. because the other condos are more like townhomes and that kind mm -hmm. of thing where you're going to have stairs you're going to have outdoor parking you may have a garage mm -hmm. but it's typically not a, a garage it's typically not underground parking with those type although mm -hmm. there are some that are what we call a low-rise apartment they still have an elevator there may be only four floors and they quite often still have underground parking. So, so yeah, there's oh. huge variation in the type of condominiums that you can buy. And so if you want to get a sense of what's out there, mm -hmm. um, give us a call at 613-860-4663. And we can let you know. We can meet with you. We can mm -hmm. also set up uh, an automated search for you if you are interested in seeing what properties are available, what they're charged, what they look like, because you get full pictures, taxes, mm. all that stuff, right? Yeah. And I, there's a lot of people, I know we talked a little bit about, they desire, you know, less in their life. And so they're like, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to get a condo because there's less to save, there's less to do, it's just easier. So mm -hmm. I want that. There are some people, though, that know that what they're doing now, there's just too much. It's not necessarily that they want less, it's just right now they have too much. So if that kind of person who's like, oh man, I'm just, you know, I can't keep up with the grass, can't keep up with the plumbing, I just can't keep up with this house, uh, maybe you should also consider a condo living. Mm -hmm. It might be, you know, it's not that you want less, it's just that it's not working. Yep. And maybe even financially, if you're mm. finding you're, you're, you're finding it's expensive to live where you are or you've, wait, wait. You, you no longer need what you have. But aren't there condo fees? Aren't those really yes. high? So talk to me about those. What's in those? Well, are they really high? Some of them are higher than others, depending mm -hmm. on how the property is managed. And if you if you looked at your house and you said, okay, every let's say the shingles need changing in ten years mm -hmm. on a typical house, what's that? Fifteen grand, twelve grand? Uh, it depends on the size. But let's, yeah. let's say uh, typical 10. four bedroom, two 10. story, ten thousand sure. dollars. Okay. So if I need shingles in in say ten years and it's five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Then I got to start putting away how much a month? What's that, like 50 bucks a month or something? Oh, man. 
Making me do math. Ten years. Head. Ten years is a ten thousand. That's a thousand dollars a year. So what uh, divide by ten? That's hundred dollars. Basically, a hundred dollars, no, no. eighty dollars. You said ten month. years, five grand. No, that's ten years, ten grand. So it's a thousand dollars a year. You oh, got to put away okay. for for your future shingles. Yeah. So that's but you don't a, have to replace them every ten, right? No, but I'm just saying. Let's say yeah. it is due in ten years, yeah. which it often is, or sooner. Yeah, and so now in a condo, you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And then if you're in the city, you've got a water charge, right? Mm -hmm. In the condo fee, so a lot of time it's included. Uh, your taxes, are, no, your taxes are going to be relatively the same because they're yeah. based on. Uh, property value, not type of property. What about insurance? Do you still need insurance when you're in a condo? Yes, you do, but less. Oh. You need condo insurance compared to house insurance. And house insurance, you're protecting the whole thing for perils. Mm -hmm. With the condominium, part of the condominium fee is your insurance for the building and all of mm -hmm. your other neighbor's buildings. And then what you need to carry is liability insurance for your unit and for your... Um, your contents, content insurance, mm -hmm. basically. So it's really not that much more expensive once you add all these factors in, is what you're talking Well, about. that's the thing. And some of the ones that are really high condo fees, you know, where you see seven, eight, nine hundred dollars mm. some of those include your heat and your hydro. Sometimes even your cable. I know that's not as big of a thing now. <laughs> well, cable's expensive. Like, it is expensive. <laughs> but I don't um, know if it includes the whole package. Oh, I don't know. Probably just basic if it's got cable. But yes, it, it includes a lot of the things that we don't think about that we're paying out on a monthly basis. And, you know, what's it cost you to cut your lawn? Well, if you're, if you got a big lawn, you might have a lawn tractor. If you got a lawnmower, you had to buy that lawnmower, you got to maintain that lawnmower, you got to spend the hour to cut it, trim it, all that's done for you. So if you start taking off all those things, mm -hmm. yes, it's slightly more expensive because it's always more expensive to have somebody else manage your property. However, then they are do doing it, it in bulk. They are so doing So there it in is bulk. a discount in that. That's true. Because they're not just managing yours, they're managing, you know, another 20, 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50 units. Yep. And so there is a discount. And again, that. people tend to like to be able to budget. Mm -hmm. So they can budget that four hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month, whatever it is. And it's consistent. Whereas if something goes wrong at your house, the hot water heater blows up or the you know, you, you need new windows or something like that. It's a significant mm -hmm. outlay at one time. Mm -hmm. And so, so they have their advantages. Now, the other advantage was people like to buy another property. And I mentioned that briefly, that mm. they like to go somewhere warm and get a property in Florida or Arizona, Panama, mm -hmm. Costa Rica, California, Mexico. The only reason I mentioned those areas, there's lots of other warm areas, mm -hmm. But we have real estate agents in those areas that we personally know that can help you if you're thinking of doing this, mm -hmm. that can help you navigate that market. Mm -hmm. Because you we even have a realtor that works in our company at Keller Williams Saw Rock Realty that also works in in uh, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So that's so great because you got a local that's working in Costa Rica that you can now work with. So that's cool. And now with buying another property, because you know you're saving on the purchase, mm -hmm. and if you need, let's say you're saving fifty thousand on the purchase between a, a freehold and a condo of similar mm -hmm. size and everything, mm -hmm. um, if you needed a deposit of twenty thousand for an investment property, that's an extra ten grand you don't need. Yeah, times could. two properties, that's yeah. an extra twenty grand. Yeah, you and can do that. So I do know some people that they're like, you know what, I, I want an investment property. However, it's a little rich to get into freehold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to buy up condos. Yep. Now, we have some people looking for condos, we right? We do. That we haven't been able to find the right one for them yet. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a, a lady who's looking for a downtown condo, but $300,000. So if you've got a condo that you're thinking of putting up for sale, um, give me a call, 613-860-4663, and we can discuss whether your condo might work for, for this lady. Mm -hmm. And then I think you have a client looking I for do. a condo as I well. I have a, a young gentleman that's a, a professional, really great guy, and uh, he's looking to own his first property, and he's deciding to go with a condo specifically for this reason, to have a simpler life at home so he can do more things outside of the home. Mm. Very cool. And so what kind of price range and area is he looking at? Uh, so he's anywhere west side of the city. 
So and, west uh, of Bank, west of no, uh, so uh, 416? No, so Canada, Nepean, anywhere Canada, okay. west side. And what style of condominium? And he's looking for um, a row unit. Okay. And it could be two bedroom, it could be three bedroom, uh, wants a garage, wants, it's essentially a house and uh, less maintenance, just less to do. Okay. And what price range is he in? Anywhere uh, up to 300. Up to 300 as well. Okay. Yeah. So if you know someone that was thinking of selling their condo, they may just want to give us a call right away because we've got buyers that are ready, willing, ready pre-qualified, mm -hmm. ready to buy. And um, maybe... It could be a match, not necessarily a match made in heaven, but we can make <laughs> a match and uh, help two people. One to move on to where they want to move and one to move into where they want to move. So that's what we are. We're matchmakers, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for joining us on the Inside Track on Real Estate. We, we trust that this was uh, informative for you and we wish you all the best.